Let's go now to the next chapter, chapter 3, Second Kings chapter 3, and let me read verses 1 to 3 para sa ating devotional today. Nang ikalabing walong taon ni Jehoshaphat na hari ng Judah, si Jehoram na anak ni Ahab ay naging hari sa Israel, sa Samaria, at siya ay naghari sa loob ng labindalawang taon. Siya ay gumawa ng masama sa paningin ng Panginoon, bagamat hindi gaya ng kanyang ama, at ina, sapagkat kanyang inalis ang haligi ni Baal na ginawa ng kanyang ama. Gayon may kumapit siya sa mga kasalanan ni Jeroboam na anak ni Nibat, na dahil dito nagkasala ang Israel. Hindi niya ito hiniwala yan. Some people feel that they are good, but they are not really that good enough before God good yet not good enough before God. And this is exemplified by this king, King Jehoram. Si King Jehoram, or Joram, was not the same as his father Ahab. So siya po ay pumalit sa trono nung namatay si Ahab. At hindi siya katulad sa kanyang ama na si Ahab at sa kanyang kapatid ni Sahajia. Kasi po, Kinuha niya ang lahat ng mga pillar of Baal na tinayo ng kanyang ama na si Ahab. At saka, this pillar of Baal was upheld or was upheld by or iniingatan ng kanyang kapatid na si Ahasaya. So ang implikasyon po is that si Jehoram ay hindi po nagsasamba kay Baal. Maybe he was not worshipping Baal. Pero, ang pag-describe sa kanyang buhay dito din is that gumawa pa rin siya ng kasamaan sa paningin ng Panginoon. Because he followed the sin of Jeroboam. So, even though na kinuha niya yung pillar of Baal na itinayo na kanyang ama, he tolerated Baal worship in his kingdom, although he was not participating in it. Thus, his sins maybe are less spectacular, hindi, hindi masyadong mabigat or malaki sa paningin ng tao, katulad sa kanyang ama. However, his sins were still worthy of divine judgment. He still clung to the sin of Jeroboam. And from the gut questions, that earns. Ito po yung sinulat nila. Jeroboam's reign included many sins. Yet the sin of Jeroboam is a quick reference to idol worship that marked his reign and the reigns of the kings of Israel who followed him. This sin was one that angered the Lord and ultimately led to judgment upon Israel. So wala nga yung pillar of Baal na itinayo ni Ahab, pero makita pa rin sa kanyang kaharian ang pagsasamba ni Baal. An idol, an idol worship started by King Jeroboam. So, today, let's, let's, um, let's learn the lesson na makikita natin na marami pang tao na that's what they feel. They pat their shoulders or they satisfy, satisfy themselves because they thought or they think that they are good. Because when they compare themselves with others, like King Jehoram, maybe if he compared himself with his father, Ahab, he might feel that he's okay because ang tinatayo niya na idol, the Ahab, ay sinira niya. Ang mga tao ngayon who feel this way, they feel good that they don't do evil themselves badly. Maring hindi sila nag-participate. 
but perhaps in their own influence, like a father who tolerate the sins of his children in their homes, in their places of influence. So para bang kung nga tingnan mo yung buhay nila, they are okay. But they allowed also that sins and wickedness mapatuloy sa mga subjects niya sa kanyang tahanan or sa kanyang pamilya or sa institution na he has an influence of change. So this is a solemn warning natin, lalo na sa ating mga parents, that while we have the authorities sa ating mga kabataan, let's impress to them that ang takot sa Panginoon ay nandito sa ating tahanan. Hindi natin pahintulutan. We are not going to close our eyes to what they are doing. Kung alam natin ay hindi ito kalugod sa harap ng Panginoon. They are doing something that is wicked before the Lord. So we, not, we, we are not going to pat our shoulders and say that, I think I'm okay because I do not participate in this and that. But we allow sa ating sphere of influence in our homes, kung saan man tayo na may influence to, to, to make decisions like that. Sana po maging clear sa atin that we mean business of following the Lord and obeying the Lord, especially sa ating mga tahanan. If we are going to clean the facade of our homes sa harapan, pero ang mga rubbish, ang mga basura ay nandun sa likod, we stuck it at the back door. Matawag ba natin ang ating tahanan ay malinis? Of course na. Ang halimbawa na makikita natin sa ganitong ugali, ganitong paniwala ay ang rich young ruler who approached the Lord Jesus Christ, who, who called Jesus Christ as good. And then Jesus asked him, do you obey the commandments? Do you follow the commandments? Have you... Have you been, uh, you know, obedient to your parents or sabi niya, yes, I, I did this. Simula pa, maliit pa ako, ginawa ko ito. Pero sabi niya, Panginoon Jesus Christo na, one thing you lack, you sell everything you have and give it to the poor and come after me and follow me. So he went away sorrowful because hindi niya mag-give up ang kanyang kayamanan for the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he was faithful in the other aspect of the law the Ten Commandments, pero he cannot give up his idol, which is to love God with all his heart. There should not be no other God in his life. Hindi niya mag-give up ang riches. So he felt that he was good because he followed some of the law, maybe most of the law. Yet, it was not enough. He was not really good enough. The Lord wants our all, all our hearts. Now, reflecting this to ourselves today, we can be good before God by minimizing to do evil. Hindi po pwede maging good time because na-minimize natin yung evil. And we compare ourselves with others na, oh, I'm doing good than the others. I'm not as, that as bad as others. I think I'm holier than others. We cannot be good by comparing ourselves to others. Kasi po ang tao, including ourselves, we have the propensity or tendency to classify our sins as big and small. Anyway, I'm not doing big sins like the rest. I'm just doing the small sins. But mind you, before the Holy God, ang lahat ng kasalanan, kasalanan natin are punishable by death. There is no such degree as more black, less black. Everything is black. Everything is punishable by, by death. After all, kung tingnan natin ginawa ni Adan sa kaniiba, how big was this? Was their sin? Kung tingnan natin ang kanilang kasalanan, parang simple lang because they just eat and pick that fruit. And it did not hurt, hurt the tree maybe. It did, the tree did not die. How much can they eat at the garden? So kung tingnan natin, parang it's just a mere simple dis disobedience. But it's not because it is against the law of God. It's, it's a slap to God. 
So every sin that we do is an insult to God. It hurts God. So this fact is worrisome, isn't it? Imagine lahat ng kasalanan natin is punishable by death. Therefore, walang simple na kasalanan. A simple lie, a simple thing that we steal, it's not just a simple. It's punishable by death. It's horrible. It's not simple. So naging helpless and hopeless tayo sa harap ng Panginoon. Kasi po, wala po maka-escape. Wala po maka- maka-alis sa impending judgment of God. Yet in this hopeless and helpless condition that we have, God has provided for us the only solution. The only and the final and the perfect solution. Binigay si Pahino sa Kristo sa atin. His Jesus sacrifice on the cross and his sacrifice was the perfect payment for all our sins at the cross. Sabi pa sa 1 Peter 3.18, si Panginoon Kristo ay just, ay namatay para sa mga unjust tayo yung that we might become or that we might be reconciled back to God. Therefore, ang ating kabutihan is only associated to God's righteousness na ibinigay ng Panginoon sa atin through Christ na ati pong parang isang isang damit na sinuot natin na hindi na makita yung dumi sa ating katawan. You know? The righteousness of Christ is cloth upon us. Ito lang po ang kabutihan na acceptable ng Panginoon. So in other words, we must receive this righteousness in Christ. So ang tanong ko is, natanggap mo ba si Panginoon Yesu Kristo that His righteousness covers now your sins and unrighteousness that you become acceptable before the Father. Maliban dito, we will not be that good. No matter how good you are before the eyes of people, it does. it is not about moral behavior. It's not about that you are respected by people or moral, morally upright in the eyes of men. But are we in the eyes of God? Are we morally upright? Are we really righteous before the eyes of God? So, hindi po pwedeng i-minimize lang natin yung ating kasalanan. And we feel that, oh, I think I'm good enough. No. Nobody is good. It's only what Christ who is good in this world. O at ang kanyang katarungan ay dapat matanggap nating lahat in order that we can be, really be good before God, acceptable to Him. I pray that lahat tayo ay nakat na mag decision sa pagtanggap ng righteousness na inaalok ng Panginoon sa atin in Christ. This is free. He who knew no sin became a sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. Manalangin tayo. Panginoon, salamat po po this morning. Again, we are reminded through the life of King Jehoram that he, he, he did good by putting away and destroying the pillar of Baal na tinayo ng kanyang ama. Yet, you still was angry with, unto him because he tolerated the worship of Baal in his own kingdom. Panginoon, thank you that maski sa aming mga kalagayan that we are helpless and hopeless because of our sinfulness. There is hope. There is the provision that we can receive in Christ. And sana Panginoon, lahat sa amin, sa aming pamilya, sa may mga kaibigan, mga kilala, that every one of us will, have, will be able to receive by faith this righteousness that is offered to us freely in Christ. Bless this our heart, Lord, today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.